In this video, I have a conversation with the Chief in the North himself, Seth Kaiser, and we talk pretty in depth about the Chiefs wide receiver situation, a Chris Jones extension, and much more. So let's get into this conversation. But first, how about those? Well, what's up, guys? I'm here with a legend in the Chiefs space, lawyer, a lot of L's, but if you put two L's together and it's a W, so you've got the lawyer, the legend, um, that's dub. That's a W, and he's writing something. What do you got, Seth? What is this? Lies. I knew you were going to gas me up. <laughs> no, that's not a lie. What I was going to say, too, is, you know, I love your sub stack. I, I'm not a reader, so the reason why I love YouTube so much is because I, I mainly learn and consume my info uh, by sight and sound, and I've been doing that way before a YouTube channel. But I'll say this. I read a couple things for Chiefs News, and your Substack is one of the two because it's just quality content, and it's cheap. You need to raise your prices. I know you're not going to, but uh, everybody go sub to this man's, uh, or would you call it subscribe to the Substack? I don't know the the verb, the verbiage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Subscribe is generally what you use. You know, subscribe, sell your soul, sign your life away, whatever. I mean, I'm comfortable with all of it, but yeah, it is it is just a subscription. Um, I can actually give people uh, the easiest way to do it is yes. um, uh, Briscoe set up a bit.ly thing, whatever that is, because I know a lot about technology. Yep. Um, it's just uh, bit.ly slash Seth really hates money. And that brings you to the uh, the, the coupon that I've kept open since I started the Substack because technically you're not supposed to let people subscribe for less than $30 a year on Substack. I mean, you can, you're allowed to create coupons, but Substack has a minimum amount that, that they want you to charge because they want you to make a little money off of it. And so my end around to that, because the idea of someone not being able to subscribe because of money, it's always bothered me. And so my yeah. end around was to create a coupon that's supposed to be a limited time coupon, and I just never closed it. So that's existed since the Chief of the North uh, Substack began back in 2020. Man, you put in uh, great work, and I couldn't believe the price of it. And I was like, heck yeah, I'm signing up for this. So <laughs> it's been the best investment, though. I mean, I, I really enjoy um, your takes and your thoughts. I feel like you have a very balanced perspective, um, which in the Chief space is good to have because I know it can get pretty divisive. And uh, I had to screen record, though, your response about Justin Ross because I was taking heat on Twitter about this man. Tr I was trolling saying this man's going for a thousand yards based on that clip of him running up a hill. Uh, but people thought I was serious. So I just I liked it. Not that I like I'm rooting for Justin Ross. So are you. But I'm just like, it's been a few years. He's gone through some injuries, two foot surgeries, the back fusion. Um, I'm rooting for him, but I'm not I don't think Brett Veach and company. I mean, in my opinion, are banking on a Justin Ross explosion season, and that's what they're banking on their wide receiver room uh, going into the, the season. I, I think you would agree with me there. Well, it's just a matter of we always need to understand, and, and one of the reasons why I do this is because it's so important to understand, well, why do we think something's likely to happen? Why do we believe something's likely to happen? Because to me, it's all about information. There's so much information yeah surrounding football in the film and in the numbers and all of it matters, but how much does it matter and how does it all work together? And so with, with Ross, it's really important to note all the information we have about him. And that is he was a good college wide receiver, but he wasn't necessarily anytime he didn't have Trevor Lawrence throwing to him a, a necessarily um, earth shattering one. And then there's a reason why his draft stock did what it did um, yeah. it, it's rare to see guys who play all four years in college and come out and, and, and have really, really successful pro careers. And some of that is injury related, but we have to take that into consideration as well. It's like, well, he's not healthy. Well, that's true, but he hasn't been healthy in multiple years. Now, what I hope for him personally is that the skill set that he did show in college, um, he, he runs decent routes. He's a contested catch guy. Uh, he's got yeah. good ball skills. There's value in that. My hope is that he just comes through, just absolutely destroys everything. But there's a difference between hoping for the best from a prospect and then, re like you phrased it, relying on it in in the short term grand scheme of things. It's kind of like if just an easy example would be Sky Moore. Sky Moore has shown more at the pro level 
than Ross has by a fairly decent sized margin. But I would still say, oh, I don't know about counting on him to make this big leap and totally replacing Juju Smith-Schuster's production because you can only go off of what you've seen, not what you're hoping will happen. Speaking of wide receivers, where are you currently at in your mind about the receiving room? Um, I, I was thinking about this yesterday. If the Chiefs were fine with where they were at right now, they wouldn't have offered Juju Smith-Schuster a deal, and they did. It's just the Patriots reportedly offered a notably richer deal. So mm-hmm. the fact that the Chiefs were willing and wanting to bring Juju back shows, in my opinion, that they're not at least content completely with where they are. Um, right. Now, you mentioned Sky. I think he, I mean, reportedly they say, yeah, we're going to rely on him more. Mm-hmm. Next season, we're going to rely more on Kadarius Tony. Next season, I know, hopefully, he's if he stays healthy, dude, Kadarius Tony's going for 1,000 yards from scrimmage. I mean, I don't see why he couldn't or wouldn't. At least. But I feel like that's a bit of a risk, you know, to, yeah. to just say, we're rolling like this. Um, now, obviously, they could go after Odell. The trade for D-Hop continues to look a little bit better as time goes on here and, and updated news comes out about, you know, recently they said the Cardinals are letting other teams start to negotiate or talk with D-Hop. They're right. pretty sure they're not going to get a second-round pick for him. They may even have to eat some of his cap hit for this year so those are trending in the right direction for me but currently and you know this the chiefs have like no cap space i just saw today they have like four million dollars they need they need they need some room for their draft picks um where where are your where's your mind currently on the the wide receiver room and your thoughts there right now i mean draft is coming they could draft one but is that enough let teach teach the people teach me let's go (laughs) well relying on the draft for for 2023 kind of ignores the history of what we've seen with wide receivers and and Andy Reid as rookies. Generally speaking, the plan you see with wide receivers, even insanely talented ones, is yeah. their first year they play a little bit more of a niche role. They they you know they do the jet sweeps, they do the screens, they do, you know, they 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 play 300, 400 snaps, you know, they're a little more of a gadget type guy. And then they start to slowly fold them into the offense as they learn to play all three receiver positions, as they learn the sight adjustments that the the Chiefs have their guys make are really, really tough. And that's why you have, um, you know, a couple of Mahomes picks this year. Odds are we're probably, and I think Andy Reid even talked about this, we're, we're more on more than they were on, on Mahomes because yeah. he's expecting him to cut in a different spot based on a sight adjustment. And that's hard to do. There, there's a reason not everyone plays tight end the way Travis Kelsey does. And it's because they just don't see the field as quickly and as accurately as he does. And that's hard to do as a rookie. And we don't have any examples, at least in Kansas City, of a rookie coming in and being the guy for Andy Reid's offense. And with the the way the, the receiver room is currently laid out, they need a guy who can kind of be the guy. You know, Smith Schuster was the closest thing to the guy last year. Had it not been for, you know, getting dinged up, he'd have had well over a thousand yards. Yeah. And that's what they're trying to replace. So the idea of, you know, with the draft, that you're going to get a guy to come in and replace that role rather than something that's more similar to what Hardman or Moore we're doing last year. It just ignores history. Now it could happen. A really polished player. I could see it. Um, I think you're right. They're not the fact that they're still in the Odell sweepstakes. The fact that they did make an offer to Juju Smith Schuster. It shows that they're not happy with where they're at, but the fact that they got outbidded by the Patriots, apparently by a fair amount, it's not like the Patriots gave Juju Smith Schuster, you know, 15 million a year with, with 30 million guaranteed. It wasn't even close to that. They could have matched that. So they're not happy with the room, but they're also not desperate. And I think that's what you can take away with their current inaction, I guess, as it were, that they've either got something in the works or they they really do think, okay, we are going to see a next step from the guys that we have here. They don't seem desperate. I mean, Brett Veach is taking his time being calculated. I mean, we watched a lot of wide wide receivers from free agency go off the board. I know you were a fan of uh, Darius Slayton. I, I liked that idea. Um, yeah. There's other talks going on, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little curious right now what the next step could be for the Chiefs. They they really don't have money to make too much of a move at the moment. Sure. I, I hope a Chris Jones extension comes. Um, I know he wants the bag. I mean, how much would you be comfortable paying Chris Jones blank check. Are you going to limit it close to Aaron Donald? 
I don't think you can go quite to um, quite to what Donald has. I think um, there, there's been there's been one extension since then that that kind of broke the bank to an extent, but still fell a little bit short of Aaron Donald. Donald's yeah. in kind of that weird category where, as far as I can tell, even agents and players aren't out there saying, "Well, I deserve Aaron Donald money." It's kind of like you know GMs can go, but do you? Do you really, you know, and that's the, there, there are very few players that are that far and away above everyone else that he was at the time of that extension that you can really make that argument. And I think with Jones, I think he's the best defensive tackle in the league right now. I think he surpassed Aaron Donald. Yes. But some of that was Donald taking just a small step back as well as Jones taking yet another step forward. For me, I'd be very comfortable paying him top of the market money, similar to what Donald got, but they are differently situated than where Donald was at at that point. And I'm curious because the easiest thing for them to do to clear up cap money for this year is to extend Chris Jones right now. His right. cap is like 27, 28 million and an extension, even one where you keep some of the money up front um, to yeah. avoid having to backload it too much. You could still save yourself 15 million in 2023, but I don't know, you know, that's been real quiet. And so mm-hmm. I, I don't know what they plan on doing with Jones I know what I would do, but they've consistently at times shown different valuations for different players. Yeah, you know, I'd be playing Willie Gay Jr. basically every snap too. Like they're just the, the, what they see and what I see are just two entirely different things. And so I, I would assume that extension's coming because that's the most that's the easiest way for them to save money in twenty three. But it just doesn't seem like there's there's. I think desperation is a good word. I mean, one could even say, if you want to say it a little more negatively about the inaction or however you want to frame it, there's not a lot of urgency that you see right now. And again, I'm sure all that urgency is going on just right below the surface here, but it's not urgency that we can see. So the the Jones extension is, to me, you got to do something with him this year. Letting him hit free agency next year is basically a non-starter because he's at a point to where he probably wouldn't play on the tag. Um, and then now you're in a situation where you forced a trade. So I, it'll be telling to me if they don't extend him, that would be, that would say something to me about what the long-term plan is there. I would think the chiefs extend Chris Jones to kind of piggyback on that. Um, and then again, that's, that's a way they're going to free up some cap space to make a move. Brett Veach and them, they, they have the picture. They have the, pu- like they're in the war room building the puzzle. Like we only see glimpses of what they want us to see. And I think it was you right. even that said a lot of these decisions that are made, that we then get news about. I mean, that that's something that's been decided for a little while now. So yes. right now, where do you think the Chiefs could go? Obviously, the draft is a month away, but I'm kind of mm-hmm. circling back from Chris Jones back to the wide receiver room because that's, in my opinion, one of the biggest position groups of need. And yeah. I, I kind of went to Chris Jones because I'm like, well, that's probably the most obvious way they can free up space. But right now, where are you leaning on what the Chiefs could be up to, or maybe a couple scenarios that could play out. And I know you've probably got to go in about five minutes, so I want to honor that time. Oh, sure. Ah, no worries. I always go longer than I'm supposed to on virtually everything. Every every week on <laughs> Times Ours, we, okay, we've got a hard out. And then, you know, a half hour after that, my wife's texting me, where are you? It's fun. Um, the, you know, they're, they're, if I were the Chiefs, looking at their current roster, They've done a good job addressing some of the issues because they lost a lot of guys. Um, yeah, fortunately for them, yeah. Well, fortunately for them, um, I recently in this in our last times ours we had a long conversation about the difference between guys on your roster and dudes. You got your guys, and then you got your dudes. And I, I'm not going to go too in depth on it because it became a nightmare for reasons that I don't need to go into here. But uh, the the. The reality is the guys they lost, while important guys, you know, Orlando Brown, Juan Thornhill, Colin Saunders, Juju Smith-Schuster, they did play important roles, but they were not the foundational dudes on the roster. And so that allows you to to try to revamp things a little bit. And they've done a good job, you know, same with, you know, Frank Clark, Carlos Dunlap. Um, At this point in their careers, they were not the foundational dudes on the defense, even though they were important. So by grabbing the guys they've grabbed, um, particularly with with Taylor, Amenahu, and Edwards, they've kind of, okay, we've kind of started to solidify some of the areas where we had losses. I think Amenahu would have been the second best pass rusher on the Chiefs last year. 
based on his tape in San Francisco. Um, yeah. that, that's great. You start to, you know, you shore things up. And then Tranquil is an interesting addition because he doesn't seem to address a hole. And that makes me wonder what the long-term plan is at linebacker, but that I suppose we don't have time to really get into. Um, but he's a good signing. He's a good player who can do things that guys on the roster haven't been able to do consistently. But they still have two areas where I think they have glaring needs. And that's defensive line, and that's wide receiver. Yeah. And so if, if I were them, the, the most obvious thing to do is to try to shore up one of those glaring needs before the draft. And that's what, you know, the Beckham, the Hopkins, name some other player here that we haven't thought of that they could trade for. And then sure. you go into the draft a little less desperate, and then you address that other side of things. I think they should take at least two defensive linemen in the draft. Um, and I would love for them to grab at least one wide receiver in the draft, no matter what they do prior. And so they've kind of set themselves right now on that course to where you still have those areas that really need to be shored up if you don't want to essentially like, you know, just run it back in terms of talent wise, if you want to try to improve on what you had in the room last year. I'll be very curious to see what they do. I love I love you kind of given the the lay of the land there with the different positions that they have filled. Uh, a guy versus a dude. That's interesting. I mean, I get it. Mahomes, Kelsey, Chris Jones, I would probably even throw Legarius Sneed in there. I guess you could maybe debate it. Um, but but yeah, they're they're building around those guys. The wide receiver room is interesting. I, I just on my live stream last night looked at like the available free agents. Um, I mean, you if they bring one back, unless they're going to grab an Odell, I mean, you're talking just for depth. I mean, Justin Watson's yeah. available, Byron Pringle, D-Rob. Like, it'd be interesting to yeah. see who they bring back. But it, I don't know that that screams we're, we're good to go if they bring one of those guys. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's got to be another move made. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a draft expert by any means. Um, I know there's a handful of receivers that are going to go in the round, you know, first round that people are pretty high on. But would you see, could you see the Chiefs going round one wide receiver, even trading up a little bit? Or would you think they go tackle or edge? I think, I don't think tackle is the most likely one, although I can see why people would go that route. Um, you know, obviously you lose both starting tackles that creates, you know, an area yeah. of need. I personally think they'll probably give Lucas Niang another shot, maybe draft another guy, you know, third round or later to try to develop. That would be my guess. Um, because really with, with offensive line, you've got, if you've got four guys where you feel like you're set, um, spending a really high value asset on that fifth guy. It, it, you you can get to a point where the where the return isn't as much. You see some diminishing returns there, um, but it just depends on what they think of the guys they have in house. So I do think defensive line and wide receivers more likely. I could see them a hundred percent drafting wide receiver in the first round, maybe even trading up for a guy if they really like him. They've shown like with Trent McDuffie last year. As much as people want to talk about this new approach um, after the Tyree Kill trade, they were still willing to trade up for a guy they really liked. And with McDuffie, I view him as probably a foundational guy. I think it really paid off and helped the True. defense get better. There's a reason they got a lot better on the back end, and he was part of it. Um, so I could see them doing that. Um, I, I think if they do, I think it's because of either defensive line or wide receiver. For me, if even if they don't make any other moves in either spot, I think I would prefer – they go that route with a defensive lineman as opposed to a wide receiver because you just can't get past the Mahomes factor and how much he help, helps the offense work. And there's no there, there's no contributing factor like that that kind of makes up for other things on the defensive side of the ball. And they really do need at least one more guy who can take at least five, 600 snaps and actually move the needle a little bit in terms of a pass rusher. And that could really hurt them like it did at times last year before they started to get a little more consistent. So I could see them doing that. Um, they've got the picks. They've got, you know, the extra the extra guys to kind of throw into it. Um, so I would do that if I were them. But I'm always team trade-up after you reach a certain point because, you know, you watch a guy, you're like, man, that guy looks good. Like, yeah. like Chris Olave last year, I was just by – the, by the time I got to his film, I was just like, you know what, guys? Let's just trade the whole draft and get that guy. Now I'm glad <laughs> they didn't do that. Yep. That would have been foolish. But – you know, that, that's I, I think it's easy to fall in love with certain prospects this time of year. 
and, and want to go that route. But it wouldn't surprise me at all to see them trade up in the first round because they've shown if they like a guy, they'll go get him. I love what you said, too, about the Mahomes factor. It, it makes me think of a couple things. When Pringle left, when D-Rob left, you know, there, there's been guys that have left that I think Mahomes has elevated, you know, maybe. And it's not a diss. Like, these guys are wide receivers in the NFL. They're starters. Yep. But I'm just saying, like, sometimes Mahomes just, he just makes somebody look excellent because of what he can do. And it also makes me think of, like, the AFC Championship game. This isn't ideal. But everyone's down due to injury in that game. By the end of it, it was Marcus Kemp. Travis Kelsey and MVS. I mean, basically, uh, they were having Jody uh, run wide receiver routes. Like, but dude, I mean, Mahomes made it happen, and I'm not. I'm not advocating. Well, just make Mahomes continue to carry uh, right. everything until he ruptures discs in his back. Um, but I do <laughs> like the idea of kind of what you're saying. Like, look, Mahomes, he can kind of always work with what's given. Why not add to the defense? I mean, you didn't directly say that, but it's just like, because they could get a wide receiver in round one, but I'm like, why not make the Chiefs' defense as scary as possible? Even though the counter to that from people is going to be, well, as long as Andy Reid's there, the Chiefs are always going to be an, an offense-dominated uh, team, so why 100%. not just why not build there and just score 50 every game? So it's definitely sure. uh, a, a balancing act, and I'm glad I'm not the GM. I'm just a fan you know, that loves the Chiefs. <laughs> You know, you 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 raise a good point there in terms of you know it's going to be an offensive oriented team. They could they could spend every first round pick and second round pick for the next rest of Mahomes' career on the defense, and it would still yeah. be an offensive oriented team. And it should be the ceiling for the offense is higher than the ceiling for the defense, and the floor for the offense is higher. And those are both important things thinking about ceiling and floor because you need to hit not just a certain. I, I my personal theory is that to win the Super Bowl, you, some of it's just luck. You got to be a legitimate playoff team and then get lucky. That, that's just kind of what happened there. If you go back and you look at, you know, the, the Chiefs could have four Super Bowls by now with luck a little different. They could have none with luck a little different. It's same with, you know, even, you know, the GOAT, Tom Brady. He could have like one or two Super Bowls if his luck were a little different. Or, God yeah. forbid, he could have like 11. I mean, it just it comes down to luck. And so the reason I mention that is having a higher floor is as important for Super Bowl contention as having a higher ceiling because your floor is what sets your consistency week in and week out. You know, are you able to perform at this level to where you know a team's got to be at least here? And so if you're playing a team with a higher ceiling but a lower floor, you 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 know you've got you know you've got a puncher's chance at least and then with a little bit of luck you can make it through. And that's where I think on defense, they're always going to have to invest a little more just to keep the floor high enough because we've yeah. seen what happens when the floor just drops out on them and they're not able to get stops. Um, but you, so that's why, like you said, I'm glad I'm not the GM because it becomes so difficult to really, you know, kind of cost benefit that because the impl- you know, for me, it'd be really hard not to say, why don't we just get like three unbelievable wide receivers? Let's just invest everything in the offense and see if we can score 50 a game. And then Spags is competent enough. We can hold teams to under 35, and that'll be good enough. But I think it's about raising that floor, too. So if I were them, I, I would really – it all depends on how the board falls. Let's say a guy like Zay Flowers falls into the mid-20s, and be, and the reason he falls – and these are just examples here, you know, name yeah. whatever your favorite wide receiver prospect is. Let's say he falls because eight defensive linemen have been taken already. And now on your board, you're on guys that are like the back of the second round then you might as well go. And that's why I think you pick at least two positions because you never want to draft specifically for need. You still want to try to to loop best player available into it. That's how I would do it, I think. I don't know. Well, and Brett Veach has said that even recently. I think it might have been on the Pat McAfee show a few weeks ago now. You know, he said, basically, if they have a true round one grade or somebody they believe in that is available, they'll go get it even if that position doesn't seem like it's a need, he he kind of referred to a few years ago when the, he thought the Chiefs were set at D-line and they lost a few guys early on in the season and then they weren't fine. Um, yeah. So interesting about that with Brett Veach. And then 
to piggyback on raising the floor, I, I think a lot of the Chiefs defensive signings have done that for sure. Like Tranquil raises the floor. He probably yep. raises the floor and the ceiling of the linebacker room. I mean, if Darius Harris doesn't come back, you know, and Drew Tranquil is there, I mean, that raises both, in my opinion. Uh, Mike Edwards, the safety, I think, helps there. Um, yep. Omenahu. But then when you said that, it also made me think of this. When they traded Tyreek Hill and they went and got MVS, they went and got Juju Smith Schuster, we would all probably say the ceiling was maybe a bit lower, but the floor was definitely higher. And they've kind of proven, like, hey, just raise the floor and uh, it spells good things. I mean, obviously, you Mahomes want your splash players. Yep. Yeah, Mahomes, Mahomes is the Mahomes. ceiling. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes is always going to be the ceiling of the offense. Um, along with Kelsey right now in this particular era. And so it really is about getting that floor up. Do you have a couple guys that can help against a well-coached defense that has talent? Can they can they go out there and beat man coverage every now and yeah. then on their own? And that was a problem for them last year at times. You, you go back and look at, say, like the Bills game early in the season. Um, they, they had some struggles separating against some aggressive man coverage looks with them haloing Kelsey. That becomes tough. So you you really but but the ceiling really is Mahomes. How do you raise the floor? And that's where unless Sky Moore or Kadarius Tony takes a big jump forward, or with Tony, it really is you nailed it. It's health. If Kadarius so Tony's healthy, I think he's a twelve hundred yard guy. But he hasn't been healthy his whole career. So I mean, how how do you weigh that out? But it really is about raising that floor to where any week you know you're not going to stink, even if you have you know, a, a weird half from Patrick Mahomes or Andy Reid has one of his rougher games. And that's the goal for me for the offense. Get that floor raised and the ceiling will take care of itself when you have Patrick Mahomes. And, I mean, to be fair, to kind of go back, you're talking the last season, there were times when I think the Chiefs missed Hill. Like just that oh, yeah. that splash playmaker. You hit him on, I mean, think of the Bills divisional game two, two playoffs ago. Mahomes hit him on a 10-yard crosser, and he went 70 yards for a touch. I mean, we didn't have that. Juju did it a couple times. MVS and him had the potential to do a little, to do a little bit more, I think, than they did. Mahomes was off a little bit. MVS was off a little bit. There were moments, um, though, that we missed Tyreek Hill. And, um, yep, there's a yeah. trade-off there. You try to become a little more balanced because you're, 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 you've got this whole influx of guys going away on the defensive side of the ball and maybe some guys that – you know, you just you need more talent there because you you end up putting the offense in a position where it's got to score constantly, and that just doesn't work. Um, it, you but you need guys like you said, you know, play creators, yardage creators. Uh, that's yeah. something that I always try to think about in terms of wide receivers. Is this a guy who will run the correct route? Who will be exactly where Andy Reid draws him up to be? Well, that's a Justin Watson. And there's some value in that because you, you you set you set the pick the right way. You be in the right position to where if the defense falls for the play call, all that stuff. But do you have guys that can create yardage where the defense has the right play call? Because you need more than just Mahomes to do that. And that's at times where they struggled last year. You got a little bit of it from Juju. Obviously, you got a ton from Kelsey. But that's the question, and that's what they really need to replace with Juju, it's not even his his overall production. The targets and yards will find someone, I'm pretty yeah. convinced. With MVS, they still have a guy that's going to force teams out of a ton of single high, although the whole, whole NFL is moving away from single high. But with MVS, um, the one of the reasons they had such a great game in the AFC Championship is they really exploited it. The Bengals decided, hey, we're going to try some single high stuff, and MVS is fast enough to run away from coverage in those situations. Mm -hmm. Do you have guys that, if they're playing just two-man – man coverage across the board with someone haloing Casey. Do you have a guy that can create separation or moss someone? And with Juju Smith-Schuster, he could win on back shoulder throws and create a little separation, shallow, not quite as much intermediate. But you need to replace some of that. If that's Sky Moore, Kadarius Tony, great. Otherwise, they they need – that's why, like, again, the, the Beckham, the Hopkins, it makes the most sense because I think you can replace that situational aspect more so than the overall statistics. Agree, and I love what you said. It goes back to your, we'll plug your sub stack again. It, you know, when you shared about Juju Smith-Schuster, you know, they, the teams didn't really, at least, you're, you know, we're looking at the film here, teams did not fear Juju Smith-Schuster deep um, at all. I mean, they didn't yeah. even they didn't even act like he was going to do that. So, but there was <laughs> elements there that he had, he had really good, you know, he was 
able to exploit zone. He was able to be yep. a great offset with Kelsey. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can get some of that with the current guys. And I mean, D-Hop is sounding more and more appealing to me. I, I just, I, we'll see what the Chiefs are able to make happen. Somebody, final point here, but somebody said that outside of the Moss signing for back in the day for Tom Brady, the Patriots didn't make a lot of splash moves. I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong. You may just know off the top of your head, but they didn't make a ton of splash moves at the wide receiver position. And um, Brady found a way to make things work. Now, I guess you could maybe counter that with the Patriots often had elite defense. Um, and it was a different era as well. Yeah, Trying to imitate the Patriot way without Bill Belichick has failed for every single one of his yeah. former assistants. And I would just, I always tell people there are certain things the the Patriot way there are there there's there's value in not overspending for guys. There's value in getting out a year early rather than a year too late. But you can't take everything the Patriots did as prescriptive when you don't have Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. That's just that's like saying, well, I mean, I don't know why more teams don't follow the Chiefs model. Well, because they don't have Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. You cannot build a team. You 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 could swap out Patrick Mahomes. Or Andy Reid, or let's say let's say you swap out the two because we're talking coaching quarterback. If you yeah. took Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid away from the Chiefs and swapped in even a really good quarterback and coach, you're not going to get the same results they've gotten. When you've got guys right. that are one of one, Belichick's the greatest defensive coach to ever live, and Tom Brady is the greatest winner to ever play in the NFL. In addition to being in terms of quarterback production and, and ability, a top five guy of all time. That's a hard combo to beat. And so their, their, their teams were based a little more around their defense. And that's just going to be natural. So I, I, I think people just need to be cautious. It's something to take into account. But it's like, oh, we should do it the Patriot way. Oh, cool. You're going to sign Bill Belichick? Because if he wants to come be Andy's defensive coordinator, sign me up. Like I, I think Clark Hunt should pay him $20 million a year to do that. But unless that, then you got to figure out your own way of doing things. You make uh, Chiefs Kingdom better, man. I just appreciate all your work. You're not just passionate, but yeah, you're considerate in your thoughts, and um, you kind of help calm the waters, I think, of Chiefs Kingdom. So appreciate that a ton. Thanks so much for your time. Um, I'm sure we'll do this again. I'll maybe maybe later before the season starts or after the draft or something. I'll reach back out to you. But I'm very appreciative of your time, Seth, and hope you have a great day fighting crime or whatever exactly you're doing in your in your lawyer smart guy office man oh thanks so much for having me and i really appreciate what you're bringing to the kingdom as well it's been really awesome watching someone like you uh push through and and build something on your own that's unique and fun thanks, and man. just terrific and it's it's made the entire experience of of creating content more fun and being a cheese fan watching you do it so so thank you as well and thanks for having me i hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with seth kaiser it was very nice of him to give up some of his time he's busy a lawyer always working and grinding so i appreciate that make sure to support this man um follow him on twitter go to his Substack. it's mnchiefsfan.substack.com and go ahead and subscribe to it he not only puts out very in-depth knowledgeable pieces on the Chiefs, but he, he really explains it in a way um, that makes sense to like the average fan. I, I would consider me an average fan and I can read it and be like, oh, okay, cool. That's what he means. And he breaks it down with film reviews and all kinds of stuff. So make sure to show your support to Seth and uh, we'll probably have him back on at a later time in the season after the Chiefs make some moves. So with all that being said, make sure to like the video if you haven't already, sub for more content like this. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those Chiefs?